<laughs> yeah, amazing. Uh, I, sorry, just uh, this isn't on the script. I just, I just wanted to say that um, obviously because of the shaman, we get an enormous social media response to the story. And uh, what's really chimes with what you've been talking about is is how weirdly underreported it is. It's so peculiar, given that there's one every five minutes in the UK, that because people have such a strong emotional connection to it, judging by the response we've had, that it, to me it seems extraordinary that this even has to happen, that there isn't a bigger funding push. It's, it's just so it makes the Stroke Association's efforts even more remarkable, because it feels to me like it's so, ob it's so obvious. Isn't it? I mean, I just, I don't know. It just it blows my mind. The numbers blew my mind when we first started looking into this. But the fact that it's really hard to find a, a general push, given how many people responded to it. Extraordinary. Anyway, sorry. That's, that's Let me introduce the next amazing speaker. Forgive me. Um, next, I'd like to introduce um, Professor Adi Adabajo. Adi is a consultant rheumatologist and uh, the clinical director of Barnsley NHS Foundation Trust, as well as a professor at the University of Sheffield, where he researches conditions that affect the bones, joints, muscles and spine. Adi is also a stroke survivor. In addition to all his medical research, he's used his personal experience of stroke to help shape the future direction of research funded by the Stroke Association as a member of the steering group of the Stroke Priority Setting Partnership. I won't say anything more as Adi's extraordinary story is best told by him. Thank you all for your kindness. That's so kind. Thank you. Um, and thank you, John, who's going to move my slides for me. Uh, someone came up just as I was coming back in and said they recognised me from the... Um, World, uh, World Stroke Forum meeting uh, in December, and uh, I, I was alongside Chris Whitty then. So I think because of that, I, I want to do my best Chris Whitty impression, which is, uh, which is next slide. Next, and, and John's kindly going to do that for me. Um, so, so my name, as you just heard, is Adewale Adebaja, and, and all the things you've heard. So in August 2015, uh, in the hospital where I work, um, I was sitting in a room talking to one of the doctors who works, uh, work, still works with me. And we were talking about something, I don't know what it was. And then suddenly I started feeling uh, uh, funny on my left side. And although, as you've just heard, I, I, I'm a medical professor and uh, I examine for, I examine postgraduate uh, students, I examine them on stroke and various other things as well. But I'll be examining for the MRCP as it's called next month again. Um, at that point in time, all that went out of the window. And as I sat there with that doctor, what went through my mind was actually the Stroke Association, the FAST campaign. And I said to the doctor, I said, I don't know what's happening to me, but it may be that if, if anything does happen to me, I think I'm having a stroke. And then I slumped into unconsciousness. And months later, that doctor said to me, he said, you made the diagnosis and you made it easy. And because of that, you know, we didn't start thinking perhaps you've not had breakfast and you're hypoglycemic or any of these things. <laughs> and they were able to rush me to have an emergency MRI scan and then I had emergency neurosurgery. And that's one of the reasons why, as I was saying to Juliet earlier, I feel indebted to the Stroke Association because I don't want to sound melodramatic. That's, that's Mark's role. <laughs> 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 but, but literally, the, the, the Stroke Association has helped to save my life. So that's why it's a joy and a privilege for me to do anything to support and promote the Stroke Association. So that, that's about me. As you saw, as I came on, I still have weakness on the left side. But it's interesting listening to Terry because initially I also had very uh, difficult problems with thinking and with memory. And one of the tests that he put up there was the clock test. And uh, I remember, in fact, my wife was just reminding me that in hospital, they, they, they brought the clock, you know, the big hand on 12 and the little hand on 2 and all that. And they asked me for the time and I just couldn't tell the time. It was impossible for me to tell the time. Uh, I, I, and I used to, before the stroke, I liked doing my sort of role was doing all the bills and all the calculations and so on. And literally, and I, I guess it's difficult if you've not had that sort of problem to, to explain it, but literally 
after the stroke, trying to do any simple sums literally hurt my head. It, it's difficult to put that into words. And yet, and that's why I just love what Terry said about the trajectory and about hope, that here I am now, back at work, prescribing dangerous drugs, <laughs> hopefully getting the dosages right. Uh, and even, even next month, again, with the help of my wife, I'll be speaking at an international arthritis conference where myself and colleagues have uh, an oral presentation. So just to go from a situation which I couldn't even tell the time to do that, and, and it's thanks to you know, the, 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 the remarkable support that I've had. So that's a little bit about me. Next slide, please, John. <laughs> but as we've heard, stroke has devastating impacts. And, and quite frankly, when I sat, I, I, as you can see, I, I'm not wheelchair dependent, but they, for a long period of time, I was wheelchair dependent. And so there was all the morbidity associated with stroke. But as we've also heard, there's significant mortality as well. It's devastating. As I sat there in my uh, sitting room in my wheelchair when I was discharged from the rehab center. I just looked at the four walls. I thought, is this it? This is, does this mean that this is the rest of my existence and work and social interactions and all that had come to an end? But I was not prepared to have that, and, and I, maybe I'll mention that later. Stroke research is underfunded, and, and you know, we're here in the Francis Crick, and I'm sure they do lots of work about cancer and so on. Uh, and so cancer is important, all these other things are important, but as we've just heard, surely to goodness, we need to be putting more money into stroke. <coughs> Next slide, please, John, because uh, I'm getting carried away. And that's why I was so keen to be involved with the priority setting partnership, which was really looking at priorities for, for stroke research. Next slide, please. And here are the top 10 priorities. Uh, there were 1,400 uh, different uh, uh, questions that came in and surveys and so on. And getting the top 10 at one point, I thought we'd never be able to find, get a top 10, but we did. And this was a partnership between clinicians, healthcare professionals, carers, patients, and so on. I managed to come up with these top 10s. And you can see the topic of today, thinking and memory, is number two. Next slide, please, John. Um, and these are just some of the quotes uh, uh, that are associated with, with the priority setting partnership and what people were saying and thinking. Next slide, please, John. And so I'm going to end uh, 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 with this, uh, a team. Uh, I, I realize that I'm in London. I don't want to upset any Chelsea fans, but I'm a, <laughs> but I'm a Liverpool Football Club supporter. <laughs> I, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. But as, I, as, as our manager would say, we're in a good moment. <laughs> and, uh, and I just say two things about that. One is that, uh, perhaps on a serious note, that as the Stroke Association say, there should be life after, after stroke, and I enjoy watching my team. I particularly enjoy them at the moment. <laughs> and I think it's so important that we should continue to make sure that people who have stroke, life doesn't come to an end. They can still enjoy some of the things. I'm fortunate I can go back to the job. I've gone back to the job that I enjoy uh, with support. I, I'm so fortunate that I can enjoy social interactions and, and football. But that shouldn't just be it should be for every stroke survivor, and I know that's one of the things that the Stroke Association is passionate about. And then the other thing about team, and, I'm, and again, my football analogy, and as I say, it's all about Liverpool at the moment, but, but the reality is to have a good team like Liverpool Football Club, you, you, you could have a brilliant goalkeeper, but you need great defenders as well. You, great, you need great midfielders, which we have, and great attackers. <laughs> and so, so you need a team. So no one person, whether it's clinicians, whether it's even medical charities, on their own is going to crack this. We all need, we need a great team. Together, everyone achieves more. We need funders, we need policy makers. We all need to come together. And I'm sure if we come together and we work together, then we will be able to overcome uh, and make sufficient and significant inroads into this nasty and, and devastating condition stroke. I appeal to you, let's come together, let's work together, and let's achieve more together. Thank you for your attention. <laughs> Professor Adabaja, a Liverpool fan, uh, which doesn't upset me at all. <laughs> um, it's... it's uh, Sorry, I promise not to do this every time. I probably will. But just to let you know that if it's any uh, reassurance to you, because obviously in the Shaman we get a lot of uh, 
response on social media, as I've said. And uh, what sprung up extraordinarily is not just people reacting to the story going on screen in front of millions of people. It's a sub-community has sprung up below the line of people sharing their stories with each other. And there's an interesting stat. On the, the, the night my character had, had his stroke, on Facebook alone, we put out a, a fast video with me blabbing on, <laughs> but uh, talking about the, you know, the, the signals to look out for, the FAST signals. And they got a quarter of a million engagements with it on the first night. So be in no doubt, even though, as we said before, <laughs> it's weirdly un underfunded, it's weirdly underreported, people know there is a community, a vast community of people waiting to engage with this and waiting to be heard.